friends, welcome to the Lori Lulu Crochet Podcast, episode 21. My name is Lori, I live in the Chicago suburbs with my husband Ryan and our two cats, Dixie and Daisy, and I love to crochet. You can find all that crochet goodness on Instagram and Ravelry, and my username is LoriLulu327, or you can email me at LoriLulu327 at gmail.com. If you have any questions or comments, all that. There is a Ravelry group for this podcast. There will be a link down below. Um, it's And if you go search under groups, it's Lori Lulu Crochet. Um, just stop on by, introduce yourself. There's a thread for that. Um, just tell me a, b- a little bit about yourself while you're there. Or you can leave a comment down below. Um, introduce yourself. Just want to welcome any new any new viewers and all my returning viewers. Hello again. I'm glad to see you. Um, I think that's it for admin. Um, any patterns that I talk about, yarns I talk about, links will be down below. Um, so you can check those out as well if I have inspired you in any way. <laughs> um, so. Today is Sunday, October 13th, and so tomorrow is the 14th. That will mark two years since we moved up here. Um, For those of you who are new, my husband is a pastor at a church. It's right behind the house. (laughs) Um, And he was actually uh, installed two weeks ago, or so two weeks ago was two years that we have been at this church so that's crazy well I say it's crazy because it's our first church and it's our first time being pastor and wife and all that fun (laughs) all the stuff that goes along with that Um, but today um, he sang a special song which my husband is not a soloist and um, Actually, when we met, I was in the choir at church, and I tried to get him to join after we started dating, and he wouldn't. And so, when we had our installation service two years ago, he volunteered and said, Hey, I want to do a solo. I'm like, What? Who is this guy? Anyway, but he said, But today he sang the song that he sang at the installation service two years ago, and it just brought back lots of memories. For today <sighs> anyway but yeah it, it was a good day today <laughs> and just these last two years have been they've been fun they really have been it's been a crazy ride and learning how to do all this is while you're on the job really <laughs> um, but one of the things that I started up here um, we have several ladies who in the church who like to crochet, so I started a group. We meet Monday nights. Um, it's called the Love Knots, and for the most part, you know, if you are working on a project, just bring it with you. Do what you want. You know, if you have something that you need to get done, that's fine. Um, but I do try to do a charity. Um, every six months or every three months it just depends on what's going on um so over the summer since it's hot you don't really want to be working on anything big so we did a bunch of hats um that were actually donated i finally got around to donating them to the lori's children's hospital and i wanted to give you a total because these ladies just blew it out of the water we ended up donating 92 hats. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and they're not all like baby hats. There's children's hats and then some teen hats because, you know, you're going to have different sizes of children there. And so that got done this week. Um, super proud of the ladies for stepping in. Um, right now we are working on squares that are going to be donated to Warm Up America. I'll put a link down to that if you're interested in that. Um, But some of the ladies are actually going above and beyond and actually making blankets 
to be donated. So, we'll see how that goes. Um, I told them to have them done by Thanksgiving-ish. So around Christmas, if they really need to get Christmas presents done, they can really concentrate then. Um, so we'll take like December off for charity work. <laughs> um, because we've been doing it all year. Anyway, um, i trying to think what else happened this week, these last two weeks. The really only thing that I'm like, I toot my own horn about <laughs> is, um, I, I don't know how many of you watched Downton Abbey. Um, I really love that show. And so when the movie came out, it's like, I really want to go see it. But my husband was like, no, he refused to go. And of course, my friend Gabby was like, well, I got my husband to go because I go watch Star Wars with him. And it's like, well, I'm the one that's dragging him to Star Wars and the Star Trek movies. So, <laughs> couldn't really, um, you know, course him with that. Um, so, I went by myself. And like, that's a big thing. For those of you who really know me, like going to <laughs> the movie theater by myself that's a big deal <laughs> but and I was fine had no problem until about 20 minutes into the movie I had to go to the bathroom and I figured there's no way I can go I'm gonna have to pack up everything to go and when I come back there's nobody to tell me what I missed so I held it <laughs> and then as soon as the credits started to roll I was out <laughs> Anyway, yeah, this is small things that can cause great victories, right? <laughs> uh, anyway, um, but yeah, it is fall now here in Chicagoland. As you can tell, I'm wearing a sweater because it is cold and I'm not happy. I want to know who turned off summer. I'm not happy. <laughs> we actually had to turn on the heat. Um... And our house is a tri-level, and each level has its own thermostat. And for some reason, the main floor doesn't want to shut off. And so, next thing I know, it's like 80 degrees. <laughs> Even though I turned, I turned off the heat. And so, I don't know what's going on with it. We need to have somebody come look at it. Anyway. But, so, it's kind of weird because we've actually taken the thermostat off of the wall like it's not connected and the heat is still running. So, we plugged the, um, the window air conditioner unit back in <laughs> to kind of cool it off. Maybe open the windows. Yeah. <sighs> it's never ending, right? Never ending. Um, oh, big news. Send in my final payment for our cruise. So that is all paid off. Um, now we just have to buy plane tickets. And figure out, you know, how soon do we want to get down there. Um, my friend actually has a hotel for us to stay that night. Um, so that she wants to get down there the day before we sail. So there's no issues. I'm like, I totally understand that. So we just got to get our tickets down there. <laughs> And still praying, praying, praying that there's no big snowstorm that'll prevent us from going. Because it's in January. Anyway. Alright. You guys ready to talk about yarn stuff? I am. <laughs> so, for finished objects, um, I'm going to say I have three. There's multiples of each of some of them because of what they are. <laughs> anyway, I want to get the first one over with because I kind of found it. I find them tacky and I just did not want to make it. But my husband was like, I really want one of these. So I love him. So I did it for him. And that is Cat Butt Coaster. Yep. I made one of these. Oh, 
<laughs> I'm just going to take it off because I don't want to see it anymore. Um, so the pattern that I used, you can, it's a free, it's a free pattern on Ravelry or you can search the internet. Um, it's a dog or cat butt coaster. Um, the pattern designer that I chose was, um, Sally LM is how she's listed on Ravelry. Um, I did stash yarn, um, so I didn't go buy anything. It's just what I had in my trunk downstairs. Um, she calls for a four millimeter hook, which it made this one, which I thought was really tiny. I mean, it fits in the palm of my hand really good. So I switched to a five millimeter hook because that's what I had with me at the time. Um, you can see the difference in that. Um, I do need to black these so they quit curling. <laughs> um, but I did a black one and I did a gray one. Um, the gray was actually a DK weight instead of um, a regular worsted weight. So I actually had to modify the pattern so it would actually work. Um, so yeah, so I have a gray and a black um, to represent our two cats, Dixie and Daisy. So now these are going to go to him, and then uh, hopefully they will be at the office. I won't have to see them because I don't really like them. But anyway, they're done. <laughs> um, the yarn, as I said, it was a stash yarn. So the black, I don't even know what that is. The pink was... Um, Red Heart Super Saver in Perfect Pink. The gray was um, Loops and Thread Joy DK. And that's that. And that is living in another finished object. I don't know why I never showed you guys this while I was working on it. Um, but I made my own project bag. I thought that turned out really cute. Um... And I put on here a button from Holly at the Proper Pineapple. It says crochet, not just for grannies. And I figured it's a granny square bag. <laughs> um, the pattern that I use for this is um, the Retro Chunky Granny Square um, by Catherine from the Crafternoon Treats podcast. Um, hers is, you know, it calls for chunky yarn. Um, and you have to use a J hook or six millimeter hook. Um, since all mine weren't chunky yarns at all, um, I used a four millimeter hook. Um, and most of it is stash yarn. Um, stuff that I had already, um, but I had bought uh, the glowing yarn, be glowing yarn. Um, it was clear and saw at Hobby Lobby. Um, that's what this multicolored, the green and the purple, and there's some pink here. It's like it's a multi-tonal um, variegated yarn that I used. And then I picked a lavender, a pink, and a charcoal gray. And pretty much for the color sequence, what I did was, um, <laughs> I signed each, so I had the four colors, I signed each a different number, and I just did a random number generator, and so I wrote it down here, <laughs> so you have, you know, so every uh, square is the same for the color sequence, um, so yeah, I did five squares, So you have one big on the bottom, and then once I sewed it all together, actually first, I lined each square with um, this really pretty purple and pink uh, fabric. I lined each square, then I stitched them all together, and then just single crocheted around and around, and created some little handles. But yeah, I thought that turned out really cute, and I'm very happy with it. Um, yeah. And so while I was working on it, I don't know why I was like, oh, I don't want to show this. I don't want to show this to them. I'm not sure why. 
But anyway, it's done. <laughs> you didn't know I was working on it, but it's done. Um, the next two that I have that are finished are part of my nativity set, which, can you see it back there? Because <laughs> I don't want to stand upright, also like I'm leaning them against the wall. I'm going to have to figure out a way to get them to stand upright. Um, but I finished two wise men, well I should say, I finished one, the other one I still have one more thing to do. Um, so here's this one, I need to... Um, attach his fez, but I thought he turned out really cute. Let's get his cloak strings to go down. So that's wise man number two. Oh, well, hold on. Drop the third one. Um, I need to make, he has a little crown to wear, um, but he is actually supposed to be a kneeling wise man. So I have two that are standing and then one that's kneeling. And he'll have a little crown at the top, which I still need to stash dive to find the yellow for this. Um, so yeah. I, those of you who are new, I'm working on trying to get um, nativity sets out to family for Christmas. So that has been like most of my week is working on nativity sets. I'm trying to get those done. Um, but I have noticed... You know, when you're working on something this tiny, you know, it's very thin, circular. I start to notice pain um, in my arm, but mostly my forearm, and then kind of right behind my shoulder blade. Like, it's a sharp pain. So, it's like, okay, I'll work on this for a little bit, and then when I start noticing it a little bit, okay, let me find something else to work on. So, let me show you those works in progress, or makes in progress and let me get a drink we'll pause for just a second all right okay so makes in progress um so in my big bag where i keep all the stuff for my um nativity like i keep all the yarns together and i just lug that with me wherever um i decided well i'll put in a project um, that requires the same size hook, so that way I can, um, so like when it starts hurting, if I'm working on something too small, I can switch to another project that's hopefully a little bit better, excuse me, that's a little bit better for my arm, shoulder, all that. Um, and of course I keep my knitting with me, I've been knitting too, and that helps too, so I can still can work on stuff, just can't be working on such small tight projects. Um, so what I keep in my bag with the nativity set um, is a cowl. Um, I've made this several times before. Um, it is the patent lace uh, sequin cowl number one six or sorry one seven six. It's this one. Um, I have it in several colors. Um, and of course, they don't make the patents lace sequins anymore. Um, but a lady at church had donated, well, she was going through her stash and getting rid of some stuff. And she actually gave me this um, loops and thread payette. Is this going to focus? Yeah. Which is also a discontinued yarn. Um, but it's this lovely gray with sequins. And then I also have some white with sequins, which. But I already have one of those cowls in white. I don't have one in this silvery gray, which uh, the color is sterling silver. Um, but here's what I'm working on so far. I've only got like six rows done. Um, so yeah, you just work it flat. And then when it gets to 12 inches in width, um, I'll seam it up and it'll be done. So, as you can see, um, it's just a row, it's a free pattern on Ravelry, it's just a row of single crochet and a row of treble crochet. Um, and it does have you do a chain and then single crochet into the chain. I just did a single crochet, um, a foundation single crochet, um, so I didn't have to chain. 
But yeah, here's my um, sterling silver cowl. So now I'll have a black one, a white one, hot pink, and then silver. And then the white uh, yarn that she gave me that the payette, I'm going to do a different cowl in. I haven't decided which pattern I'm going to do yet, but anyway. Um, it is in my cute little Japanese knot bag, which has hedgehogs all over it. Um, I think I got this from KT and the Squid a couple years ago. I'll put a link to her Etsy shop. She does a lot of patterns and hand dyes yarn as well. Um, but this will be in my big bag with Nativity set for when I need a break from the tiny stuff. <laughs> and then, um, other stuff that I work on when... Um, if it, my shoulder's hurting, um, my knitting does not bother my shoulders or my wrists. Um, so for those of you who were here last time, I actually have the pattern now so you can see it. It is the Sock Head Hat by Kelly McClure. Um, you can see it's supposed to be a slouchy hat. We'll see if I make it that slouchy. Um, I kind of like slouchy hats. It all depends. Um, the yarn I'm using is a gift from my friend Lisa. Um, you know, show her tag. It's 100% superwash merino. Um, 100 grams, so I get 417 yards. And then the needles I'm using are Chow Gu needles. It's a three millimeter, um, so it's a US 2.5 with the cable. Um, so last time I think I only had four rounds done. And look how far I've gotten. Isn't that so pretty? Oh, let me show you the yarn too. So here's the yarn. It's lovely teals and blues. Oh, it's gorgeous. You did a good job, Lisa. <laughs> um, yeah, so I have to do four inches of ribbing, which I should be close to that soon, I think. <laughs> um, the whole time I'm working on this, I'm just like, this better fit me, this better fit me. <laughs> Doing all this work and then I wouldn't be able to wear it? Like, that would really make me upset. Um... So, fingers crossed that this will work. Um, yeah. So, I'm getting there. I keep this bag in my purse um, at all times. It is, it was made by my friend Nicole. It's the Starry Night uh, bag. It's just a, a sock size bag, uh, drawstring. And it just fits in my purse and it goes everywhere with me. <laughs> Which, I've never really had a project like that, that fit in my purse that I can take everywhere. Anyway, so that's my knitting. I'm knitting, oh my goodness. <laughs> um, the other one I wanted to show you, it's a make in progress. It's living in my crochet fast dye warm my Tunisian project and I am happy to say I'm starting on the last color. So hopefully next time I will have it done for you. <laughs> Quit showing this thing. Um, I am using a bamboo Tunisian needle. Um, it's a five millimeter uh, hook. So yeah, it has a nice little stop around the end which works. Um, let me show you. So last time, oh, hold on, I'm all tangled in the yarn. Happens quite often, doesn't it? Um, so yeah, I was down here where the little um, sheep's uh, progress keeper is. Um, so yeah, I did all of this. 
and then I started on the last color. Um, I gotta say, this stitch, I did not like doing it. It was a chore. <laughs> the only thing that kept me going was like, I'm not showing this on the podcast again until I'm on the last color. Like, I need to get this going. <laughs> need to get this done. Um, so the last one, basically each color that I'm doing is a different Tunisian stitch. So when it's all done, I'll go through each stitch again, each color, why I picked that color, all that. Um, so yeah, I'm thinking the last stitch that I'm going to try is the ocean stitch. But I gotta look up YouTube tutorials on how to do that. Um, did I say YouTube tutorials? I meant YouTube tutorials. <laughs> uh, Although YouTube tutorials wouldn't be bad, right? I like YouTube. <laughs> okay, and then the last make in prog progress that I have um, is a crocheted knocker. Not a knitted knocker. Um, so my local yarn shop, which is a mile and a half out that way, <laughs> It is called Llama Llama Ding Dong, and you gotta do this every time. <laughs> but every Saturday, they are doing a stitch together um, where we do the knitted knockers or crochet knockers, um, which are basically breast prosthetics um, that are given to women who have had a mastectomy due to breast cancer, which pretty much is the only reason that you have a mastectomy, I think. There may be other reasons why, but. Um, one thing that I'm really enjoying about this though is that it's going to a local clinic, so it's local women who will be getting these, and so that makes me feel really good, like, it's not going to somebody, I mean, it would still be great if it went wherever it's needed, um, but I like the fact that a local woman is going to benefit from this. Um, so I've already done a pair and donated them. Um, I did the A cup size, although yesterday when I was working on this one, I realized I did it all wrong, so they're extra small, <laughs> so I may redo the A cup again, so they get the proper size. Um, let's see, was it last year? Hannah from the Cozy Cottage, she did a knit and knackers, crochet along, knit along, um, and so she did a pair of each size. So I was like, well, I'll do the same thing. I'll do a pair of each size. We'll see how long it takes me. Um, so this is a B cup, which I did it proper this time. So it looks so much bigger than the A cup that I did a couple times ago that you saw. Anyway, um, I've already started on the decreases. Um, so I have, you have to mark, um, you have to do three spots where you mark it, um, where you do the increases and then the decreases. Um, so I have my lovely uh, stitch markers that I got at Stitches Midwest through the stitch marker slot. Um, these two stars, they are paper origami stars. Can you see them? Ta -da! Which I got from treasure goddess she has an awesome you need to go check her out I'll put a link to her down below um, she's got beautiful yarn cute t-shirts I have one of those myself and then I have this really cute uh, rainbow bead with a butterfly um, I'm not sure where I got that one from but anyway there's my knocker <laughs> um, yeah the yarn that I'm using is uh, Lion Brand Kobu, and the colorway is beige. This one actually has that it is certified um, by the Ninja Knockers group because um, you need to make sure it's a certain um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, we don't want wool, you don't want scratchy stuff, you want soft cotton stuff that's easily washed that won't um, bother any scar tissue. And all that. Um, this is 50% cotton 
50% rayon from Bamboo. Um, again, colorway beige. I am using um, a three, no, a four millimeter hook. Um, so it's a G hook. You can see the G stamped on there. And then this is my fancy uh, ergonomic clay hook from Speckled Clay Boutique. Um, it really helps when I'm doing stuff like this. Well, all my crochet hooks are ergonomic ones because I've got a bad wrist. Anyway, um, Speckled Clay Boutique, I think she's taking a break right now. I'm not sure. I'll put a link down below. You can go look and see what she's done. I love her hooks. I think that's part of the problem too because on my nativity set, I'm using a 3.75 hook or an F hook. And it's not an ergonomic hook. I think that's most... Like, it is, but it's not a thick ergon... I need a bigger bigger handle on that hook. Maybe that'll help me. So, that is it for Make Some Progress. Da -da, da -da -da. Yep, I got them all. <laughs> um, so, really, the only thing that's left is the 2B section. Um, I was really good. I haven't bought any yarn these last two weeks. Um, mostly because, like, okay, we're getting close to, we need to pay off our cruise. Um, but a couple months ago, I bought this yarn. It's Yarn B Soft Secret. Hot Grape. <laughs> and look at that. Ooh, that's a pretty purple. And that's not even showing up true to color. Back here, nope, it's still showing too red. Anyway, um, I bought this to make hats for my friend and her two little girls. Um, we're actually going on the cruise with them, so <laughs> um, I said I'm not sure what hat pattern I'm gonna do, but I will be starting those this week. And that is really the only thing left because. Everything else is a work in progress, and I gotta get the nativity set done, because I just need that done and out of my life, <laughs> for now. Um, the only other thing is my podcaster show. Love, love, love these colors. It's a big shawl. Big rectangular shawl. Um, it is now live on Ravelry. Um, yeah. So, it's for sale, um, although the coupon code is only good till tomorrow, which, if you see this in time, you can get to it. Um, October 14th is when the, um, the coupon code is good for. Uh, anyway, um, this one I kind of liked. I could, if you really want it chunky around your neck. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, this is the fourth and final of my Inspiring Women uh, shawl series. Um, you know, I've been listening to the History Tricks podcast um, where they talk about women of history, and there are a lot of them where I'm like, oh, she's really inspiring. I should do something for her. So it's not that I'm going to stop doing inspiring women patterns. Um, I think I just might do other items like hats or ear warmers or something along those lines. But anyway, Podcaster Shawl is inspired by um, all the podcasters that I watch. I think I'll put a link to all of them down below. I'll just put my subscription list down there and you can look find some new people to watch if you don't watch them already because I'm sure most of them you already watch um so yeah anyway I think that's everything so I hope you have a great two weeks um and I just you know thanks for watching um subscribe like whatever <laughs> um Oh, I was on the History Chicks um, forum on Facebook, and they were talking about how th when they sign off, because I always feel really weird when I'm signing off here, 
Um, but they always end up, you know, thanks for listening. You know, Beckett says, thanks for listening. And then Susan's like, bye. And then I always say bye back to them. And so somebody said something about, she did the same thing. I'm like, oh, good, I don't feel so alone. It's like, well, they have a set thing, so maybe I'll just go with what they do. <laughs> with they, with what they do. So, thanks for watching. Bye.